The Clinis Engage IE is the Ohio Health Information Partnership's statewide health information exchange. We are the designated state nonprofit charged by the federal government with creating the infrastructure and platform for Ohio so that medical professionals across the state can share patient information with one another. The ClinicSync Exchange is a gateway for these health professionals. We've also signed up 6,000 primary care physicians to adopt or upgrade their electronic health record systems. And this step is now to create the Health Information Exchange so they can share that data. We're working with Medicity as our vendor to implement ClinicSync in Ohio. What you're seeing in this video today is St. Rita's Medical Center sending out results to community health entities on December 15th, 2011. St. Rita's is one member of a group known as the West Central Ohio Health Information Exchange and is the first hospital to implement ClinicSync. Meet Dr. Shum, who is the Vice President of Medical Services at St. Rita's, and we had the chance to talk. Dr. Shum, how do you feel about being the first hospital to go live on the ClinicSync HIE and to send direct messages to Mississippi. I'm glad I have the team that I do uh, that put it together. I mean, that, that's what's really made it happen. So, you know, with our staff, with the uh, ClinicSync staff, with the Medicity folks, um, everybody really worked together. And, and, you know, when you bring a group together that have never done this collectively before, you don't know what you're getting. And uh, it, it was just a dream. I mean, uh, the way everybody worked and, and really worked together with the same vision made it go very smoothly. Um, I'm excited that our, our West Central Ohio HIE is the first one in the state to bring it up. I think though the other story that excites me is that you have two physicians with disparate systems that could communicate with each other. And then also we were able to do an interstate transfer, uh, you know, between here and Mississippi and, and do that. And that's, that's exciting as well. Baby steps, but very significant steps uh, in, in the exchange. And I think the story is you look at those providers, you know, they're family docs like a lot of other docs, but with the help of, of the people that pulled this together in the community, they could accomplish that. Now we're at the Orthopedic Institute of Ohio, one of the entities now receiving results. The others are the Opgyne Specialists of Lima, Sheehan Wisser, a physician practice, Delphos Medical Associates, and Dr. James T. Bolas. What you're seeing here is Adam Rossback of the Ohio Health Information Partnership and Ben Brasicki, the IT manager, as they make sure results are coming in from St. Rita's to a shared folder where authorized clinicians can access the results. Now we're at the Health Partners of Western Ohio, which has a lot of different names, but essentially is a federally qualified health center that treats the underserved and uninsured in the area. This one clinic handles just about everything for its patients, including medical services, as well as dental work, a pharmacy, lab, and behavioral health folks who help the community with mental health and substance abuse problems. Here's Jolene Joseph of Health Partners as she meets Rich Branch of the Ohio Health Information Partnership and Rick Brandt of Medicity. Jolene, tell us about your experience in getting started with the Health Information Exchange. How will this benefit providers, physicians, and patients? When this first started two years ago, everybody was hopeful, but not quite sure how long this was going to take and, and the processing or the impact that it may potentially have. Um, for our providers, certainly the continuity of care is crucial to them in being able to communicate with their, what we consider partners in the community. Um, we're dependent as a primary care organization on a lot of the ancillary specialty type of services and this particular link that we're able to have electronically is able to become more efficient in their delivery of care and then in their treatment planning because then the faster we're able to obtain these results, the quicker we are to determine what these patients' needs are. And hopefully um, our outcomes are going to look a whole lot better in the very near future. For our patients, I think it's the same, um, the continuity and being able to know that their providers in, in healthcare, their partners in healthcare, are actually communicating with one another in real time. You know, we are able to get those results very efficiently and they're able to go into their medical records for their providers to review and the patients then benefit in the long run. Uh, we are looking at a patient-centered medical home model of care and this certainly goes hand in hand with that delivery model. Currently, uh, we obviously have an electronic health record and within our organization and we do a lot of scanning of documents for them to read 
and with them being able to electronically uh, download the information, they're able to view that very rapidly, um, and they're not able, they're not having to wait on a lot of that documentation to uh, arrive um, via a fax machine, potentially lost um, or misplaced. It will come in to our system, and we'll be able to manage that uh, very well and reduce a lot of inefficient time uh, that we have had wasted in, in looking and locating or being on the phone and trying to get a hold of that provider. Rich, can you explain to us what discrete data is and why it's important to exchange it among doctors and healthcare professionals? Now when they scan it in, it comes in as an image. An image is, is just a snapshot of the results, just like you're looking at a paper, you can view it, you can see it, you can't manipulate it. But the discrete data is actually the information passed in a way that can be uh, graphed or charted. You can actually work with that information rather than just looking at a snapshot. And also, currently, to um, look at outcomes for our patients, we're having to, what I would define as data entry, those results currently. And when this information is dumped into the system, it will automatically download into those values that we are referring to so that we are not looking at potential errors on the information on that patient and where they were a year ago to where they are today, whether it is their uh, hemoglobin A1C results or um, it is their, their lab results from their lipids and we're able to manage and monitor, are they improving? Are we seeing improvement in their health care? And that is automatically then generated through this particular process. Jolene, what does health information exchange mean for those patients that have the highest health care costs, such as those with chronic conditions? Currently today, we are, from a quality improvement standpoint within our organization, we, we monitor and measure um, and compare our providers against one another to providers out in the community on chronic disease management. That is our diabetes, our hypertension, our depression, um, our cardiovascular disease. And what we're able to do is to look at uh, labs that are drawn for those patients to manage and monitor their health care and currently that information we have to download or data entry ourselves. This system will allow that to automatically go in that patient's chart and help track them over time. Are we seeing improvement in their, their overall health? Rich, can you give us the long-range plans of the Clinisync Health Information Exchange and how it will roll out over time? This is just first step, get receiving results. Uh, what we need to do next uh, and in the very near future we'll be able to send results also and query results. So there's uh, CCD records, continuing care documents that can be generated out of an EMR and we want to push that EMR back into the Clinisync system, the H statewide HIE, so that can be uh, shared if another physician needs to see what happens here, they can view that information there. So right now we're doing more of a push method, we're sending results here. Uh, but what we hope to also do is a pull method where if a physician here needs to see something, they know that they have the patient in front of them, they know the patient saw a doctor across town or in another city, they can go to the HI state, HIE, the cleanse sync system, and query that information and pull it back. So it will be a two-way communication. And that would be the next step within the next uh, year. Rich, once the hospitals, health centers, labs, and physicians in Lima are connected, what happens with other regions in the state? Once we have the, the, the uh, ClinisSync system for the statewide, it, it doesn't matter where you're located, you'll be able to view that information. Um, and we're rapidly assigning hospitals throughout the state, uh, Cleveland area, Toledo area. And, and so that information will be able to share, but also then state to state information or between our HIE and another HIE will be sharing information. Um, and, and this is all a process that will happen over time. but. Uh, at least we're working towards that goal where all information will be readily available. What you're seeing now is the team making sure the results are transmitted properly to health partners. Heidi Alspa and the team are troubleshooting and watching the great delivery of results. Medicity is the vendor the Ohio Health Information Partnership is using as the infrastructure for Clinisync. Between December 15th and January 6, 2012, Clinisync sent 5,264 results. These include transcription reports, such as clinical summaries, histories, and physicals, 
blood bank results like antibody screens, lab results such as potassium, glucose, and basic metabolic panels, microbiology reports like urine, blood, and throat cultures, pathology reports like tissue and bone biopsies, and radiology reports such as x-rays, MRIs, CTs, and bone scans. We're at St. Rita's Medical Center where Dr. Schum and his project manager, Chris Landon, met with us to talk about the big picture of health information exchange and its benefits. Dr. Schum, why don't you talk for a moment about what this means to the medical community and the regional community at large? One of the things in the community, um, I think in a broader picture, is this has been a neat uh, work to just to bring together the hospitals. Uh, usually, you know, we compete with each other, uh, but this is one where we really laid that down and said we want to work together because this is this is for the benefit of all of us. Um, and so you have five hospitals, uh, you have two private labs that usually are competitors uh, who really saw the vision to do this for the sake of the community. Yeah, for the providers, the physicians, the nurse practitioners, the key thing will be they'll be able to get the information into their EMR directly. Uh, so they won't have to transfer it, they won't have to copy it, so we've got better accuracy. Uh, it'll be much quicker for them, uh, so it'll be right there for them. Um, the other thing is, we're looking at that it'll be actually more accurate in its delivery. And we'll be able to make sure that accurate that uh, delivery is complete, uh, it gets to the right person, the right place. Part of it is, we actually will be able to track where those results go. So we can come back and if there is an error, we'll be able to audit it and realize where it is. Today, if a paper result goes somewhere, unless that recipient sends it back to us, we don't know it went the wrong place. We don't know how it was delivered. The other thing is, if there's something that uh, disrupts that delivery, now we'll be able to track and see what it was and why it happened. In the paper world, we don't know what the delay was. Dr. Shim, are there any cost savings associated with health information exchange? Look for as far as cost savings, uh, one of them is just purely mailing cost because we deliver results by courier and by mail now. And so we'll be able to eliminate those. So it shortens the time and it also will, will reduce the cost. The second thing that's harder to quantify is being able to track those results and know they're delivered will reduce our risk because there's an element of risk of results that don't get delivered in a timely manner. What's the difference between a paper world and an electronic one? In today's world, in the paper world, if you have a patient that may go to one lab and then go to another hospital and to another ED, they're going to get those results in different formats, they're going to get it different ways, uh, and they're going to get it at different times. Here, they actually will be able to get it all in the same format into their system however they want to receive it, whether they want to receive it by fax, or if they want to receive it in a print format, they can download it and print it, or if they want to send it directly into their EMR. Um, the other piece of this that, that's really important to us is down the road, after we've got some data in the system, they will actually be able to go out and retrieve that information in the system so that if they're seeing somebody there, regardless of where they've been, they'll be able to pull all that data together. Today what they have to do is actually call those places, get the results sent to them, uh, and really it can take hours to get that all done as well as it takes a lot of uh, staff time to accomplish that. Chris, you said communication among Medicity, Clinisync, and your staff was really great. Can you explain that? They brought both parties to the table. We worked on our weekly calls, and then from our standpoint, we brought in our interface analysts, and we were just able to have that sync between the two to work out the issues, to work out the processes, because we started from the very beginning. Dr. Shum, there's a debate about who really owns patient data. What's your perspective? That's a great philosophical question. In my mind, the patient owns the information. The format it's in, you know, is wherever it resides. I mean, if it's a paper chart, it's whoever owns that piece of paper. But that information is yours and mine because it's about us. 